So we are going to download Codelight IDE for developing C and C++ programs. So let's see how we can do it. So MinGW provides the tool set to compile your C or C++ programs on your Windows operating system using GCC or G++. So let's see how we can download and install MinGW. So first of all, open your favorite browser and search for MinGW. And in the search result, you will see some websites. So don't click on the first website, which you will see here, which is from SourceForge. You need to open this website, which says MinGW-W64.org. So just click on uh, this link, which says MinGW-W64.org. And once this website opens, you will be able to see the overview here. And on this website, you can click on the downloads uh, link here. So here you will be able to see all the download link for MinGW for different operating systems. So the one we are looking for is the Windows version. So we are going to click on uh, this link which says MinGW W64 builds. So just click on this link which is going to open this kind of uh, window again. And from here you can uh, download the MinGW builds from SourceForge. So you need to click on this link now, right? So SourceForge link was uh, shown directly in the search result, but you need to go through this website in order to come to this website. And once you are redirected to the SourceForge.net website, you will see that MinGW 64-bit installer exe file will be downloaded on your Windows 11 operating system. So once this file is downloaded, I'm going to click on this uh, file. And then uh, you will see this warning which says, do you want to allow this app from unknown publisher to make changes on your device? I trust this, so I will click on yes here. And I'm going to minimize this browser. And you can see MinGW installer has been started on my Windows 11 operating system. So on the first window, I just need to click on next here, which is going to uh, start the installation. Here you can choose the version or MinGW. So I'm going to choose the topmost option, which is 8.1.0 at the time of making this video. You can also choose the architecture. I'm going to choose x86.64. And then you can choose the threads. So generally for threads, I always choose POSIX, but you can also choose Win32 also. Also exception, you have two options. I will leave it as default. And then uh, you have the build revision. I will leave it as default also and then click on next. And this will be the location where your MinGW compiler will be installed. So you can see it will be uh, installed in uh, the program files. MinGW directory will be created and then this uh, folder will be created, right? So if you don't have the good reason to change this location, just leave it as default. And also you can leave this checkbox as checked, which is going to create a shortcut for your MinGW uh, compiler tool. So I'm going to click on next now, which is going to start the download of all the files and packages for your MinGW tools. So just wait for this process to reach to the 100% mark. So now after some time, I can see this window, which says click next to continue the installation. So I'm going to click on the next. And now I can see this message, which says MinGW has been successfully installed and I can click on finish to complete the installation. So let me click on the finish button. So once I click on the finish button, MinGW is installed on my Windows operating systems. So now once MinGW is installed, first of all, we need to know the location where MinGW is installed. So at the time of installation, you might have noted the location. So let me show you the default location where MinGW will be installed. So you need to go inside the C directory and then go inside the uh, program files. And then you will be able to see this MinGW-W64 bit folder here. And then this folder will be there. So this is the location where MinGW is installed. Then you need to go inside MinGW64 and here under the bin folder, you will see all the files which will help you to compile your C or C++ programs. Okay, so go until the bin folder, right? 
and you need to copy this path. Now we need to set the environment variable for mingw so that we can uh, use gcc or g++ command on our windows command prompt or powershell or terminal. So for that what you need to do you just need to click on search and then search for edit env and it's going to show you this result which says edit environment variables for your account and you can see this window is going to open right. Now if you uh, can't find this edit uh, environment variable window using the search option then you can always open the control panel and then once control panel opens you need to view by category here and then click on system and security and then once again click on system here which is going to open the settings app and here it's going to show you in about section this uh, link which says advanced system settings. So just click on that and then click on environment variables which is also going to open the same window. So you can choose any one of the method. So once uh, this environment variables window opens select path under system variables and then click on edit and then click on new here. Okay. So it's going to allow you to uh, add a new environment variable and then just copy the path until the bin folder inside your mingw64bit folder okay so this path is until bin folder okay and once you copied it you can uh, just uh, add this path here inside your environment variables and then just press enter which is going to add your path and then click ok here and then click ok and then once again click on ok and now you can close all the windows here and now we can test our GCC and G++ versions and commands, right? So you can open the command prompt by just uh, pressing CMD and then open the command prompt from uh, the result. And once the command prompt is open, here you can just uh, write GCC space hyphen hyphen version and then press enter. And if you see some result which looks like this, that means GCC command is working successfully on your Windows 11 operating system. Similarly, you can also check the G++ command, which is also used to compile your C++ programs. So it's also going to show you this kind of result here. So first of all, open your favorite browser and search for CodeLight. And the first result which will appear here will be from CodeLight.org. So I'm going to click on this link. And you can see using CodeLight, you can develop C++, PHP and Node.js uh, programs, right? You can see download uh, tab on the top also and you can see the download button here also. So I'm going to click on the download button and then you can choose if you want to pay uh, some donation to this uh, CodeLight IDE. I don't want to do this, so I'm going to just say not now, continue to the download page and then you will reach to this uh, web page where you can find the installer for your windows 11 operating system also so i'm going to click on this uh, link which says windows installer 64 bit and once i click on this link it's going to download this code light exe file so just wait for the download to complete so once this code light exe file is downloaded i'm going to click on this exe file and i'm going to minimize the browser so if you see this uh, message which says windows protected your pc microsoft defender smart screen prevented an unrecognized app from uh, starting so i'm going to click on run anyway and now first of all it's going to show you this warning so i'm going to click on yes and then it's going to show me the license agreement window so if you uh, agree with the license terms and conditions click on the first uh, uh, option here which says i accept the agreement and then click on next this will be the default location where your code light IDE will be installed. So if you don't have the good reason to change it, just leave it as default and then click on next. And then just leave the next window also default, click on next. And if you want to create a shortcut icon on your desktop, check this checkbox. And also if you want to create a quick launch shortcut, you can click on this checkbox. So I'm going to just check on the first checkbox and then click on next. And then click on install which is going to start the installation of this code light ide so it's going to be installed really fast you can see the code light ide has been installed on my 
Windows 11 operating system. So once the code light IDE is installed, just leave this checkbox as checked and click on finish, which is going to launch code light IDE. And you can see this icon also has been created on my desktop. And now you can see code light IDE has been started. So it says welcome to uh, the setup wizard. You can click on next and then on the next window, you can choose C and C++ development. And then I'm going to click on next. And then this is the important part. So on your Windows operating system, you need to have a MinGW compiler in order to run and compile your C and C++ programs. So if you have already downloaded and installed MinGW compiler, you can click on scan. Otherwise, you can click on install button, which is going to download the MinGW compiler. So in my case, I have already downloaded the MinGW separately. And if you don't know how to download the MinGW, I will provide the link in the description of this video, which shows you how you can install MinGW on your Windows 11 operating system. If you want to install MinGW with your code light IDE, click on the install button, right? This is important. Otherwise your code light IDE will not work. So let me click on scan because I already have MinGW and code light has recognized the path of my MinGW. So I'm going to just uh, select that and then click on next. And then this will be the default theme of your uh, code light editor. You can also change it to dark or gray, or you can change it to light. Okay. So I'm going to leave it as default and then click on next. And on the next window, you can see a uh, white space and indentation. I'm going to leave everything as default and then click on finish, which is going to uh, restart your code light editor once again. So I'm going to maximize this window. And now let's create a new uh, C++ project. So I'm going to click on uh, file here, click on new, and then I can either create a new empty file or new workspace. So let me create a new workspace here. And then I'm going to click on OK. And this will be the location where my project will be saved. So I will leave it as default and then click on OK. And you can see it has created the workspace for me. And then under the uh, workspace, you just need to click on workspace and then you can create a new project. So here you can give the name to your project. I'm going to name my project as hello. And then I can provide the category. So I want to create a console program for C++ and then the type. So from here I can use simple executable G++ and then you can also choose the debugger. So I'm going to choose the GNU GDB debugger and then click on OK which is going to create my uh, project. And you can see the main.cpv file is also created. So you can see that in this uh, CPP file, there is this uh, program which is already created for me, which is a C program. It's not a C++ program. So let me replace this uh, C program by C++ program. So I'm going to paste a C++ program here which is a very simple hello world C++ program. You can find uh, this anywhere on internet. And now in order to build this C++ program, I can click on the build option at the top and then click on build project. So when I click on build project, it's going to build my C++ program. You can see build completed successfully, zero error, zero warnings, right? So there is no error and there is no warnings here. And now I can run this program by just uh, clicking on build on once again and then click on the run button. And then you will see this kind of warning which will ask you would you like to build the active project before executing it. And you have two buttons here. You can build and execute your program uh, together and you can execute your program if you have already built your program. Okay. So it's a good practice to click on this option because it always build and then execute your program. And you can see the program is successfully built. And then you can see the output, which is hello world here, which we wanted to print here. Okay. So now everything is working on your code light IDE. So in this way, you can download and install code light IDE on your windows 11 operating system. 
I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video.